Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Amri minkum and always a reminder for myself and I'll the garage of da'ifu, miskinu, zalim, jihad. But for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence in this path of realities and immense oceans of, of blessings that a reminder of the one whom they take a path of spirituality and they take a path of cleansing of the heart, the heart becomes a very subtle instrument and because of its subtlety it's very sensitive to energies. And that's the whole purpose of the practices, the awra, the recitations, the etiquettes, the meditations, all of that is that to awaken a heart that most people's hearts upon this earth are dead. It beats to keep their body alive, it is like the charge within a vehicle and it's keeping its own minimum charge or minimal charge to keep that vehicle moving. And the majority operate with a heart that is near death although they feel they're very much alive. They're very close to walking dead upon this earth. Spirituality and these practices, this way all of these energies, meditations, everything that Prophet brought, all of Islam, all the practices of Iman and all the practices of Maqam al Ihsan and perfection was to awaken the heart. And then this heart with all its practices becomes a sensitive instrument and which has an immense amount of capabilities. With its sensitivity it begins to pick up the vibrations necessary. Means it receives the emanations, <coughs> what people may call hal <coughs> and fights. When this heart becomes sensitive and awakening, it picks up the energies. And the hal is when the heart is feeling a vibration coming towards it, an inspiration coming towards it, and isharat, what we call guidance, coming towards it because it's fine tuned. All of the meditation we talked about in the last few nights, it's fine-tuning it. So we have to give analogies based on what people can perceive. So this immense communication device like a hand, hand radios or uh, ancient these old radio things that you would buy and fine-tune it to pick up far and distant communications, well this device is so powerful it picks up into the seven heavens. And the communication of the Divine, the Angels, the Prophets, the Saints and all holy souls that are continuously transmitting. So that's all these practices are to open that reality within the heart, fine-tune that reality within the heart. And as the servant is struggling in the way, because our life is about a continuous struggle in, in the way of Allah because all that we can speak of the seven springs it's not for us to, to talk about the direction of angels and who's directing angels and putting names to who's in charge of that operation that we should stay away from that can bring the downfall of somebody. But more important in the understanding that there's going to be a tremendous amount of communication that the servant is picking up with a living heart. And what's in important for them is that their practices are awakening this immense tool that Allah gave to us of a living heart. 
faith in action. It's now pumping, it's now being cleaned, it's now doing zikr, meditation. The meditation, we said before, is that you're opening a world of unseen powers by specifically calling upon God's servants so that they come and begin to fine-tune this vehicle, this vessel of operation so that they can fine-tune the heart on how it has to be programmed according to the coordinates that are coming for this tariqah. So it's like calling in technicians, you cable man and technicians. As soon as you meditate these technicians are coming, you don't have to see them means you're calling upon the med meditation and the madha to be with them so that your coordinates are very clear. So imagine people who don't have a shaykh that is so universe open for me oh, then there's going to be a, a thousand devils in that room because you, you didn't give specific coordinates, you basically opened up for everything. But the tariqah's perfection is that, no you better call specifically upon your Lord Sayyidina Muhammad and then these heavenly servants whom serve under that reality. As a result their presence comes and begins to fine-tune this equipment, then puts it on a signal for Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah. So that the coordinates of the servant is now picking up the Naqshbandi guidance from these big, big souls whom are eternally responsible. What we would call Uwaisi, that's one of its understandings at that time when Mawlana Shah Naqshband Uwaisi al-Bukhari was giving for us an understanding. Uwaisi and the concept of Uwaisi is that they, they communicate at the level of the soul to stations and souls that are not physically on this earth right now. Means that you have a living shaykh and his soul and then in the world of souls they are eternally living. And to be eternally communicating and being guided by them they would call that uwaisi. And this was a, a, a tremendous reality of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban that he put into the inheritance of the tariqah. Because when the guide has it, he gives that as an inheritance into the tariqah, that my tariqah will be based on this uwaisi principle because the level in which the students will be raised by Mawlana Shah Naqshaban will take them to the ability of their souls to communicate on this bandwidth. So now we have some technology bringing us closer to this understanding. So before you had to go and enroll in a university and physically take a seat at the university. But when Allah opened through these pandemics and everything was everybody had now understanding of distant learning. The perfection of Skype that evolved into Zoom that went towards now Microsoft meetings or whatever they call it now. But all of that was uwaisi, that you could sit somewhere and a professor from anywhere in the world will log on and begin to teach students from all over the world in which he can talk to them, they can hear him. They can see him, he can begin to convey materials to them because we reached a point in which Allah grants the technology for us to understand what spiritual guidance is. So from nights and other nights before, what, why if somebody passed do we need them? Because this is, a, this is an immense heavenly reality that we're just beginning to understand in the world of physicality. In the world of physicality you had to enroll into a top university to take courses. Well now we'll be evolving into a place where you don't need to enroll anywhere. You mainly go online 
and those top professors will be accessible. And they'll have courses with tens of thousands of students teaching that specific course that they're famous for. So that's Uwaisi. In the spiritual realm, Mawlana Shah Naqshaband and Naqshabandiyat al Aliyah because of the inheritance given by the soul and the power of Mawlana Shah Naqshaband, that became almost a principal foundation of Naqshbandiyah. That they're all enrolled in a heavenly university. That if they sit under the tarbiyah of the shaykhs and the shaykhs teach them how to meditate, how to clean, how to purify, how to, to sit with respect, keep a character of respect, it's like the shaykh is bringing them to the computer conference and teaching them how to log on and begin to participate on this sort of online course taking place within the realm of the world of light. As soon as their heart logs on and they do their practices, what's happening? They're taking a seat within this university and that these shaykhs, the angels, mu'min jinn and believing souls that are the staff and the professor of Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah. So you mentioned, so we try to bring it to how we can relate on a physical plane, how is this happening so people can understand otherwise there's not words that can explain these realities. So people have to understand from the physical realm how they can log on now and, and take courses. The spiritual has that at a much more powerful reality. And it requires that the discipline that you have, just like you know some older parents you tell them to log on, they don't know what you're talking about, how do you log on, how do you do anything, there's a discipline. You have to know how to use this machine, you have to know how to log, how to do, you have to have some sort of tech savvy. The same for spirituality, you have to have some spiritual savviness which you know how to meditate, you know how to contemplate, you know how to discipline yourself on how to connect with the shaykhs, how to connect with the energy, how to present yourself with good character so that the connection with the shaykh is strong means now you've logged on. And when you log on there's immense amounts of realities coming through this connection. So Arabic terms would have called them fayas and hal. Means that when you're on this connection in, in a course with them that's very individual but may be happening to many people at the same time. Because on these courses it's a one-on-one -on -one that as soon as you log on, meditate, that connection may send you audio-visual into your connection and that would be the reality of a hal. That all of a sudden you connect and they send you some images that are important for your course that day. Something that puts a confirmation in your heart, a vision of something and these audio-visual files that are being sent to the servant, those are known as a hal. Means they're, they're actually experiencing some audio-visual file that coming to them and the fire is, is the transmissions of knowledges and energies because fire is, is an emanation. So may, they may log on because this is a immensely virtual connection. In a static connection you'll be sent files, you can look at those files, you'll be, you'll be given information and you'll be astonished, oh wow look at that how I did this on this course. But in the spiritual realm because it's alive, on that connection that day you may be sent energies. And these energies begin to move through you. Now the energy being sent by angels, so energy are angels, this qudra or malaika, who they are, who sends them is not important. The importance is that the qudra that coming to you are malaika, are angels, the servants whom have an abundance of energy.
because of their practices what they have opened on this university and on this platform of Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah that they're continuously logged on as a result there's a continuous file being sent to them. Video audio files that are coming to them, courses and studies that are coming to them that are emanating as energies. When these energies are flowing to the servant these are angels moving into their soul because angels are a light and an energy. The soul that is overwhelmed with Divinely energies and Divinely angels as a result has an outpouring. The knowledge of the shaykh is the, the byproduct of the amount of energy and angelic reality within that soul that's producing these knowledges. So every knowledge that is coming out is all from these angelic realities. So if they don't have a qudra they don't have a knowledge because there's no angel, there's, no, there's not that abundance amount of angelic energy within them. So energy equals angels. So the fires is the emanation of these powers and as a result of these powers the servant is not in control of themselves. <clears throat> if the <clears throat> strength of the shaykhs with the teaching to the servant to meditate, contemplate, make sure you keep a connection so that when these emanations come, again for us to understand as if the shaykh is holding the servant because the energy is coming strong and you have to learn how to process the energy that's coming to you because if it comes and comes Jalali, it comes a majestic energy, you're going to transmit yourself as very angry. So that's when a shaykh knows himself and knows that his tajalli is coming very fierce. If he opens his mouth and speaks he's going to obliterate people, he's going to be very hard and crush everything. It's okay if those students can take that tajalli because he's not physically harming anyone, he's putting a fire of Divine Grace in, into their souls. So they take it, they take the, the jalali, tajalli and there's a majestic energy coming into them. So then the students have to be trained in patience, tolerance, immediately they feel an energy coming that's very heavy. Then they have to isolate themselves, they have to wash. So it means it's all these practices that are coming real. When you tap into this station these are real energies coming and they require extreme discipline. That's why you can't take it halfway, you can't just say, oh I'm listening to do like this, do like that because then you go mad, you're just all over the place not, not listening. The tajani when it comes then there's a discipline, the servant trained on how to confine themselves, they're fine-tuned into their feeling, they can feel the vibration coming and majestic tajani doesn't tolerate anything. It has no to tolerance because it's Allah's might and majesty. As a result of intolerance one must sequester themselves and seclude themselves, process the energy, let it to pass, they wash. If too heavy they have to cool off in water, they shower to cool their energy off. They, they eat from something sweet and drink from something cool to cool their energy, then beatific energies. They may log on at a different and Allah describes in Qur'an Ayat al kareem that your Lord at every moment is in a different tajalli. So means that if you follow the journey of a shaykh in one night he can laugh, he can cry, he can talk serious, he can go through every state of emotion in one night. In, in one 30 minute talk because Allah 
describes that my Lord is in a, a different tajalli at every moment. Means that at every moment through that signal a different tajalli can be coming. And as a result when their heart is fine-tuned to that station they are not in control. So the heart that is locked onto that signal and these are again high level guides because not everybody can go back and, and you know claim, oh that's why I'm a mean person, that's why I'm angry this, that's why I'm that and just give excuse for that, that's not what we're talking about. But we have to understand that the, when the heart is surrendering, it surrenders to what this signal is sending. Those who are in training they'll be observed how much of this they can take. That's why then the perfection they don't scream out like Tourette's, right? We've been to different places and the, the servant is screaming out uncontrolled sounds uncontrolled emotions. This is not acceptable in Naqshbandiya because it means that a signal is coming to you and you have an inability to process the signal. Can you imagine like if every hal and every angelic energy and inspiration started to come to your heart and you just start screaming out what we call ecstatic chantings and it's not the level of perfection that Naqshbandiya guides are teaching because the perfected guides teach their servant, their students, sit, don't move like that, don't show the tajalli to people, don't start screaming to show yourself as something different, keep yourself calm, disconnect from the connection if you can't have that ability. Do not let that emotion to show to people means there's an adab on how to connect with this power station. And that's then these understandings of hal and all these openings and all these angels and all these energies. These are all the tariqah it's being taught day by day in the talks and the lectures and the connection so that when these energies are coming there's a discipline, there's a characteristic in which they take the energy, they process the energy when it's heavy they know that they have to isolate, they know they have to keep away from people. When it's joyful and, and beautific then they want to share that energy with people because whatever they're feeling coming through, this is at the level of the guides, whatever their feeling of emanations coming through they want to express it to the people so that the souls of people whom are with them, not physicality, right? So there may be 5,000 people watching, if they have love and muhabbat it's going to be sent immediately into the souls of those people because the souls may be all around the shaykh but their bodies may be thousands of miles away. And if they died they could be hundreds of thousands of miles away, I mean they're in the seven heavens still receiving the fires of the shaykh. As the shaykh is sending to, to, to them they're also sending to other students whom have passed. Means there's no more boundary of time and space in this ocean of muhabbat and ish, The vibration that are coming are, are dress upon the heart and then the shaykh expresses those vibrations through the talks, through the zikr, through the salawats. Most powerful through the majlis of Salli ala Nabi because those are very powerful majestic associations with the ish and the love of and the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad because the best of adab for the one whom praises that reality is always graciously blessing that reality and that association. By means of His Holy Presence in all the majlises that praise upon His reality that Holy Presence is there dressing and blessing with immense, immense amounts of lights and blessings. So means that our way in this way of hijrah and the seven springs means it's a life of traversing these seven realities and seven paradises and seven stations that have to be opened upon the servant. That's why Allah has us in seven tawaf, that each tawaf is for us to recognize and that's what how it was supposed to be taught but the uloom and the knowledges stopped. 
So people began to make a Hajj like a tourism. And that's the state that Prophet described now. A day would come where hajj would be like tourism. It wasn't a struggle. So the old time struggle, you left and in one year you struggled through the desert and walking to get to hajj, to get to Mecca, to get to Medina. Well the shaykhs are doing that at the beginning of Muharram, the stay where you are and we're going to begin struggling for this whole one year. Every talk, every night, every zikr, every month's tajalli was us walking through this desert to arrive into Medina to Munawwara, to arrive in Mecca and to arrive into the Haramain so that this was our spiritual journey from wherever they are, doesn't matter. As soon as Muharram begins those souls are connected with the shaykh on a 12 month journey into that reality. So it means then these seven names and our seven realities that have to be traversed, that we have to struggle. As we're struggling in this way, connecting, receiving these faizes, receiving these energies, the best way to understand these seven paradises and seven openings is that the seven layers of the heart and the dress within the heart has to begin to open. So it means that they're connected. They understand it's fine-tuned, then they have to be trained in the tajallis and the energies that are coming into their heart. They feel the energies, they feel the fires of the energies, they cry, they laugh, they have emotions that are not necessarily under their control but their heart is fine-tuned to receive the signals. And that's what's important is that a heart that becomes alive under the disciplines of the shaykhs and that's why they teach the different disciplines and that's why they ask for the certain characteristics that you have to meditate, you have to connect, you have to be strong in the connection with the shaykh so that this radio can become fine-tuned and that you can begin to receive the emanation of the heart. That's what's most important and it's not in important to give ourselves excuses or email and say that, oh I, I didn't do it, I can't do it and please pray for me, that doesn't help anything anyways. There's nothing that the shaykh can excuse, it's just a matter of the servant having and the servant of Allah having a discipline within themselves that they want to achieve that. If they want to achieve it, they're going to sit and do it. You can tell all you want, oh sorry I, I pray for me, I'm not able to, it doesn't matter. You're not going to achieve it. It's a matter of sitting with the discipline, making the connection, making a time for these energy and these realities to come to you and that you're on that signal and on that channel. And then through the teachings it's the shaykh holding you, teaching you good manners, good manners. Why? Because that's a symbol of the holding. If you understand you're supposed to have good manners then when a heat and a jalali sort of majestic tajalli comes, well you've been trained to have good manners. Well, when, when did you need your good manners? When that energy comes. Control yourself, wash, put a lollipop in your mouth and go hide so that you've controlled that. If they don't see that you can control that then you're very limited on the progress and the elevation of the servant. Because Allah don't ask for something that you, you can't or that you, you don't want to have. Means that Allah doesn't give a servant something that will cause them harm. So then all of these practices are coinciding. So when you say, oh I want energy, I want energy I want, and the next email comes in that, oh I can't control my anger, so I'm sorry Shaykh. Well, no sorry for me, sorry for you because then if you're the one who is receiving the tajalli and you're the one whom is emailing that you can't control your anger and your characteristics then your progress stopped. We can email you back, Allah bless you but doesn't mean anything, you just Allah bless you but you're not going to progress because then you're saying that's that how Allah would put you in harm that, oh next time they'll send you even more energy and then you, you completely flip and go completely out of control. So alhamdulillah everything is a discipline, everything is a curriculum, everything must be achieved. 
Whether the shaykh prays for you, okay, 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 it doesn't mean anything. It has to be achieved, the disciplines have to be achieved for then the student and the servant of Allah to progress and to reach more and more. That's why with beautific characteristics, Khuluqul Azeem, Allah was describing Rasul Kareem because he's our hero, our Sultan the entire example of our existence that if you want the love of Allah it comes with khuluqul azeem that you are of a beatific majestic character and that's what Allah wants. Nobody can achieve the character of Prophet but it becomes something for us to understand and make as a guide. Not the character of the shaykh, not the character of any human being but we have to have the characteristics of Sayyidina Muhammad and we pray that the guides exhibit that characteristic and that becomes then, how do I choose a guide is I want a Muhammadan guide. I want a guide that is showing me the example and the love and the good character of Sayyidina Muhammad that has its had, has its limit to dunya because nobody is, is, is like Sayyidina Muhammad Allah created no one like that, that this is a oneness. As there is nothing like unto Allah there is nothing like Sayyidina Muhammad All are just little degrees of perfection but nothing in the ocean of perfection and reality. And that makes Prophet so immensely unique and a unique creation from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhana rabbi izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmatul Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basiru Surat al-Fatiha.